It's a great morning. Amen. We're alive and well. Hallelujah. Got a made up mind this morning. <laughs> How many of you got a made up mind this morning? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, it's got a made up mind. See, that's what all you need. You just need a made up mind. I want to serve God. I want to live for God. I want to follow God. I want to obey God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can y'all close it up for me? I want all y'all that like I got a million dollars, and the closer you get to me, the quicker you'll get your million. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I pray you find Laura. <laughs> I know you and Tegan may have to scoot out of this fire. Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Praise you, Jesus. Woo wee. Mm. I tell you, when I got a revelation of how much God loved me, it totally changed my life. And as a matter of fact, it gave me a life. I really began to live and enjoy this good life that God has given. It ain't nobody but God. <laughs> nobody but God. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we're going to talk about prayer. <laughs> we're going to talk about prayer. We're going to look at Paul's prayers that he prayed for the church. And a lot of times people will say, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, just pray the prayers that Paul prayed. Amen. Jesus was a man of prayer. Glory. Now hit something over seer. <laughs> well, praise God. Because I wasn't here and I didn't call to ask about nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. It was good. All right. All right, Brother Shropshire. He said it was good. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to first Ephesians 1. And we're going to look at verse 15 <clears throat> through 23. You know, prayer is the foundation of the church. A church that is built on prayer is a church that will last. Jesus was a man given to prayer. And when we look at the way Jesus prayed, and that's our example, Paul was our pattern. Jesus is our example, Paul is our pattern, amen? Paul is our pattern because Paul was a man just like us. He was flesh and blood just like us, and he was subject to everything that we as mankind is subject to today. So that's why Jesus was our example. He showed us. And even when he was talking to his disciples, and after they had seen him do many miracles, signs, and wonders, they didn't say, Lord, teach us how to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. They said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because they saw when Jesus went and got along with the Father, and he came back out, miraculous things happened. Amen. And we're going to see miraculous things happen. God is wanting the church to pray today like never before and pray the word of God. There are so many opposing forces. There's so many things that Satan is trying to do and use people. Amen. And it takes the word of God. It takes the people of God to overturn those things. But we do. Ha we have been given that power and that authority. Amen. We can shut down what the enemy is trying to do. <clears throat> We're not going to let him have our city. We're not going to let him have our state. 
We're not going to let him have our schools. We're not going to let him have our children. God has duly deputized us and authorized us by filling us with the Holy Spirit and the power. And we can and we are a light for the kingdom today. I'm going to give you a statement. No man or woman of God is any greater than his or her prayer life. No man or woman of God is any greater than his or her prayer life. Second statement I'm going to give you. To be much for God, we must be much with God. To be much for God, we must be much with God. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, the word tells us we are to pray without ceasing. That that doesn't mean that all you do is just walk around and pray. You stay in an attitude. You you just, it's on your mind. And prayer is not based upon you being on your knees, which you can be on your knees. But while you are on your job or whatever, you can always pray. Your prayers don't have to be long or anything. Lord, help me. That's a prayer. Anytime you're seeking God and seeking his way, prayer will align us with the will of God. Do you remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane? And he prayed and he took the disciples with him and he said, I want y'all to watch and I'm going to go yonder and pray. And he went three times and he prayed, Lord, you know, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup. What he was doing was taking complete authority over his spirit, will, amen, your spirit, your soul, and your body. He successfully defeated the spirit, the soul, and the body in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because when he finished praying that third time, he said, Lord, nevertheless... Not my will, but your will be done. Do you know how amazing it would be and awesome for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ if we would start saying, Lord, not my will, but your will. Not the way I want it done. Not how I I think it ought to come out, Lord, but I want your will. That's all Jesus said. Jesus said, everything I do, I've seen the Father do. Everything you hear me say, I've heard the Father say. He said, the words I speak unto you, they're not my words, they're his words. The miracles and signs and wonders that you see me do, it's because this is the Father working through me. So Jesus was a man given to prayer. And if we're going to be powerful in this day and age, and we're going to be able to stand and be rooted and grounded in the word of God and refuse to allow things to shake us, we're going to have to be people of prayer. And a lot of times, uh, even in this church, prayer is the least attended service that we have. I mean, I don't understand how you can come to a church a whole year and you can't make prayer. Amen. I'm just going to be straight up with you. I don't see how you know you got time to go everywhere else and do everything else. It's just the same three. Same three or same four. Yeah, truth is just the truth. Same three or same four every second. Ain't but two Monday nights in a month. So after this, I expect to see some change. Second and fourth Monday nights at 6 o'clock. Second Monday and the fourth Monday, 6 o'clock. We usually about six to seven. <clears throat> because when we start understanding the power of prayer, you, 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 it's going to be hard for you to stay away. Because when we get together and we begin to pray, we open heaven to come into the earth and begin to arrange things the way God wants them to. 
God has always used a man and he's always going to use a man. That's his, that's his system. That's the way he set it up. Now, when he created the heavens and the earth and when he created earth, the last thing he created was man because he wanted man to rule the earth for him. That's just his plan. That's, that's just the way it set it up. It's almost like you go into a job. You don't go in there and write the rules and what governs that job. They have that already written. So when you go, you have to acclimate yourself to what's already on the books. Maybe the job you had before, you didn't have to be there to eight. This job say seven. You can't go in there and tell them, well, you know, the job I just came from, I went in at eight, so I want to come in at eight. They say, well, you're in the wrong place. And so a lot of times, God has given us a blueprint that will cause every born-again believer to live prosperous. God has given every born-again believer The indwelling or the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That's the power and the anointing of God. There is not a one of us in this house today that cannot live victorious and have overcoming faith. Not a one. Because God's no respect to person. He's given all of us the same Holy Spirit. How many born again people do we have in here today? Let me see your hand. Then all of us have that same Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that is living on the inside of us. The same power and anointing that it gave Jesus to follow the will and the plan of God is the same power and anointing that is in us that will allow us to follow the will and the plan of God. Holy Spirit will let us know the heart of God, the mind of God, the thoughts of God. And then he gives you the power to carry it out. So he said, we should pray without ceasing. Luke 18 and 1 says, men ought always to pray. Let's let's look at, we'll come back to Ephesians in a little bit. Luke 18 and 1. And I have my passion Bible. Ooh, I like this Bible. I even like the name of it, Passion. Have you ever seen somebody that's passionate about something? They give it their all. They in it all, wholeheartedly, all the way. It's in about time we get passionate about God. Luke 18 and verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Read with me. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, when I look at this, Men ought always to pray. So if I don't pray, there's a possibility I'm going to faint. Faint means to grow weary. It means to stop. It means to give up. So if we don't pray, in prayer, God gives you answers. And so if you go to God with whatever it is that you're praying about, God will give you answers that will cause you to stand strong, will cause you not to give up, not to lose hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I have good news this morning. Sister Sharon Watts have started taking dialysis again. See, when you pray, beginning to eat, when you pray, God will move. Ooh, thank you, God. 
See, there's a spirit called Barzilla. And that spirit will start talking to you when you get to be about 40 years of age. And then that spirit will tell you you're getting old. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you, you don't, you're not really useful anymore. And it'll start saying, well, you know, at 40, you, your bones will start hurting, all right? 40, you, you, you can't think like you used to. That's the spirit of Barzilla. And he'll start talking to you. Now, don't wait till you get 70. He'll bring a whole choir. Have them play while he tell you, you know, dementia is on the rise. Not where I am, the blood's on the rise. See, you got to know how to combat those thoughts and lies that the enemy will try to perpetrate into your life. You got to know what the word says in order to come against what the enemy is saying. He said, men, well, when he said men, he's talking about mankind. He's talking about women too. Ought always to pray and not faint. The word of God, I think, is in Proverbs 18. I can't think of it. Say, if, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So when you pray, you know, when Jesus came out of that garden of Gethsemane, he knew exactly what was confronting him. He knew exactly what he was going to have to go through. But by the time he got up out of prayer, he was well able. He, he was able to go through and to finish what the Lord had sent him into the earth to do. So we don't want to be fainting. So a cure for fainting is prayer. If you're fainting, if you feel like you're weary and you feel like you want to give up, then pray. Because the word says men ought always to pray and not faint. Because when you, when you get in the faith, presence and the face of God and you begin to um, pray, God gives you strength. He'll give you strategy. He'll give you wisdom. There's a calmness, an anointing that will come and will rest upon you. Amen. Matthew 6.33 says, men ought to always seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto him. Matthew 6 and 33 Let me get there. My mind going in so many different directions. Matthew 6 and 33, you have it? It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, when, as we go and we begin to look in the prayers that Paul prayed, one thing stood out to me. Paul never prayed for things. All these prayers we're going to look at, Paul didn't pray for things. But the majority of our prayers is for things. The majority of our prayers is for God to meet a need, God to do this. But we're going to look at, and when I looked at the Lord showed me Matthew 6 and 33, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be what? Add it. Add it. Given to you. Supplied to you. It will be added to you. Some of us are working two and three jobs trying to take care of ourselves. Now, there may be times, like my mom used to say, you get the ox in the ditch, you got to get him out. <laughs> You you gotta get you got you gotta get him out, and sometimes you may have to do that. But God wants us to seek first the kingdom, and see, God as our Father wants to supply our needs. Now I'm not saying that we don't need to work, 
Don't everybody go and call in tomorrow and quit your jobs. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying seek the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is his way of doing and his way of being right. Because even if you work like that, you still got to have God's wisdom and strategy on what to do with the money you make. Because you can work five jobs, and if you're foolish where your money is concerned and you don't do the right thing, then it, it's still not going to help you. You're just going to be tired and broke. So he says, seek first the kingdom, his way of doing. So Jesus was always seeking the kingdom. He was always, he even said, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of the father that sent me. Everything you see me doing, it is to glorify my father. That's what Jesus said. Everything you see me doing, everything you hear me saying, it is to bring glory and it is to bring honor to my Father. It is to usher in the kingdom. One thing we need to understand, before Adam fell, Adam was just like Jesus. He was just like Jesus. I read a lot of books say you could put them up together and they, would look, they look just alike. I said, wow. He had, the, he had the Holy Spirit in him just like, that's why God could come down in the cool of the day and talk to them because they had the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. So when Jesus came to earth, yeah, it was to cleanse us of our sin, but it was so the Holy Spirit could come back inside of us so we could once again get back above the fall and begin to communicate with our Father. Isn't that good? I'm glad Jesus came. I'm glad he died. I'm glad he was uh, resurrected. Amen. And now we, where the Holy Spirit used to dwell in a tent, separated from people, only, only the high priest could go in the Holy of Holies. When Jesus came and died, gave his life, was resurrected, then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. That's, that was that sound they heard. Say it was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. When Jesus died, when he got up and that veil was rent in two, the Holy Spirit said, Woo! No more do I have to be shut off from the people of God. Now I can get back in where I belong. And they can, this the Father's desire that they be able to communicate with him again on that level. Now I'm out of this place, glory to God. But he still had to wait 50 days because he had to wait till the day of Pentecost. And when the, Jesus said, now you can go in them, glory to God. Woo, woo. So when we seek first the kingdom of God and his way of being right and his way of doing things, we'll find that our long prayers may no longer be necessary. Because sometimes, just because your prayer alone don't mean it's a prayer of faith. And no, understand, we don't have to beg God for anything because it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And a lot of times we try to qualify ourselves to be able to receive from Jesus, but Jesus already qualified us. When he shed his blood, gave his life, and was re and resurrected, and God raised him from the dead, you were then qualified. You are an heir and a joint heir, and everything that the, Jesus said, everything that the Father has is mine, and you are mine. So we're heirs and joint heirs. So everything Jesus has, guess what? It's ours. It belongs to the body of Christ. And we are the body of Christ. So we're going to look at how Paul prayed. Paul had a very, in the beginning he was Saul. And he went about persecuting the church. And he thought he was right. He, he was, that was religion. And he thought he was doing God a favor by dragging out the people of God and having them killed and everything until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. See, some of us going to have to be knocked off our high horse. Well, I know that would go over well, but it's true anyway. See, any time you think you know more than God, you're in trouble. Because how can the clay say to the, to the potter, the one that made him, no, you need to make me this way? No, 
the potter, when he puts that clay in his hands, he have a design in mind. He has a usefulness for that in mind. So all of us are, were in the Father's hands. And the Father made all of us. He put giftings and talents in all of us. Amen. He knows your purpose. Prayer will help you find out your purpose. All of us have a purpose. You didn't just show up. God, you are an intentional. (laughs) You are an intentional creation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're supposed to be here. You're supposed to be here in this dispensation of time. There is something in you that you are to supply that will make this world a better place. All of us have it. Prayer will reveal it. See, you can't let people tell you who you are. You go back to the one that made you, the one that created you. And and guess what? He took us out of him. There are no garbage piles in heaven. There's no junk in heaven. We came out of him. And God is love, so everything in him is beautiful. So you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Nobody else may not think it. But God says you're beautiful to me. So we need, to, we need to hold on to that. And prayer is communication with God. It's a time where you sit down. Have you ever sat down uh, to have a conversation with someone and you, you both are just, you, you listen and you talk, you listen and you talk, you listen and you talk, you listen and you talk. That's what prayer is. We go to God, we, t- we do a lot of talking. I, I remember when I worked at Lance and I'd be going up the road in the morning, but it wasn't anybody, maybe a car or two on the road in the morning. And I would take that time and just pray all the way to work. And I, I got up through Ballantyne one morning and it just hit me. I said, Lord, I've been talking all this time and I haven't let you, do, do you want to say something? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't let you say anything. And I'm just talking and talking and talking and talking. See, we need to know what he knows. We, that's what prayer is. Prayer is talking and listening. Talking and listening. Because God will answer. His ears are always open to the prayers of his children. He just like you as a good, I mean, you know, it would be rude for somebody to sit, sit and talk to you. That's why we tell when you go out to, to lunch with somebody, you stay on your phone. You could have just bought, had that dough dashed. As my grandbaby Destiny said, Grandma, that's so rude. Because If you and I go out to dinner and we go out to eat, then I'm there because, well, I'm hungry, but I'm (laughs) I'm enjoying your company. And so we want to interact. But if we sit there and we get the food and you stay on the phone the whole time, you know, (sighs) that's going to make me feel like, you know. So how do you think God feels? When we get up and go about our day every day, I'm not talking about coming to prayer here. Let, let's just take it on to the house. And you get up every day. He wake you up every day. And he gift you with life, health, and strength. He's giving you a job. He's, he's giving you a home and a family. And he gives food in the refrigerator and clothes in your closet. And you go all day and you never, ever acknowledge his existence. That's like taking somebody to lunch and them staying on the phone the whole time you're there. You remember when we were talking about the Holy Spirit, say, grieve not the Holy Spirit? Our actions can grieve him. He wants your undivided attention because I guarantee you when he went to Calvary, we had his. All of us was on his mind. Every person that had ever lived 
was living there that will ever live. That's all was on his mind was getting us back to the Father. He'd been in the Father's presence. He knew the Father's heart. And he knew that he wanted all of his children back. And so prayer is a way to become one with God. You'll find out. And as you practice the presence of God, you'll begin to acknowledge him everywhere you go. And in everything that you do, I was in the grocery store and I got on that aisle that likes to call my name. And I was going to get two different things and the Holy Spirit said, you don't need that. Now, you know what? He didn't twist my arm. He didn't lock the door where that stuff was. He didn't take my buggy and push it around the corner. I had to make a decision. And see, God's a gem. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He's never going to force himself on you. And see, when you start praying, you'll learn to hear the voice of God. A lot of people say, well, I don't know when God is talking to me. Well, his voice sounds just like his word. You'll know when he's talking because he'll tell you something to do and you don't want to do it. That's God. <laughs> you'll, know, you'll know when he's talking because he <laughs> It's going to be a lot of time it's going to be opposite what you want to do, how you want to fix it, and how you want to sell it. Then there are times that God will just talk to you and he'll tell you how much he loves you, how precious you are to him. And, you know, he has, he has a reason for you being here. Some of y'all just need to celebrate that. There's, there's a reason why you're here. There is something in you that's going to make this world a better place. And so you need to acknowledge that. That's why it's so important that we know what kingdom we're from so we can act like where we're from. We need to talk like where we're from. We're royalty. We're a holy nation. We're a chosen generation. You know what it means to be chosen? It means to be picked out. You've been chosen. I remember Bill Winston was talking about before he got born again, and he, they went to this, I think he said this club or whatever, and said he and a bunch of guys, and said some ladies was looking over at him, and said he told his buddies, he said, y'all, I don't think, perhaps I don't think I'm going to be with y'all alone tonight because I believe I've been chosen. <laughs> and you need to not know today you've been chosen. There are things in you, giftings and talents. There, there are things God has put in you. I mean, you, you're not something worthless. You are valuable because you are a, a carrier of the anointing. You are a carrier of the glory and you are a carrier of the Holy Spirit. The Holy, listen to Holy Spirit is dwelling on the inside of you. That's why God said be ye holy even as I am holy. Because if the Holy Spirit wasn't in you, you couldn't be. But he said, be ye holy, even as I am holy. See, when you know where you're from, I, I like to look a lot of times at over in England, you know, and when the kings and the princes come out, they never go to the front seat. I believe that's why I like to be chauffeured. I like to be chauffeured. I like to be taken to the front door. And let out. <laughs> I like the closest parking space. Well, that, you know, I'm chosen, but that's got something else to do with it, too. But anyway, <laughs> when you know, and this is not to get puffed up in yourself, but you got, you got to realize that you're the answer to somebody's prayer. You're the answer to somebody's need. You're somebody's hope today there's a word in you that can save somebody's life so we get all this from spending time in prayer with God prayer is a wonderful thing when you wake up in the morning I don't know who was at uh, I think I was looking at uh, Apostle 
Ozella Anderson, and she's got a podcast she do. And she said when she wake up in the morning, before she talked to anybody, she talked to God. You know, that's when you start practicing the presence of God. You wake up in the morning, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And see, when you, you're cultivating a relationship, you're aware that they are there. He don't have to come from nowhere. He's already right there. He never left you. Watched over you all night long while you slept. Told everything in your body to flow like it was created to flow. Your breath, your blood pressure, everything in your body. He told your body to sleep. He told your body to rest. And he stood there and saw to it that no demon, devil, principality, or power was able to come in and take your life so when you wake up in the morning he ought to be good morning daddy good morning jesus good morning holy spirit thank you so much and you know if he didn't leave you last night whatever you got to do today he's right there you've heard this thing silent partner glory he ain't a silent partner. he don't want to be a silent partner he wants to be one there to give you answers. The Bible says study to be quiet. When your mind is all full of stuff, you, God can't talk to you. You need to calm that mind down so he can talk to you. These things come when you get to God and you go to God in prayer. Don't try, don't try to impress God with some big old words. You don't even know what they mean. You know, just, just, just talk to him. Daddy, you know what? I know the word of God says that you have not given me a spirit of fear. But I'm telling you right now, fear trying to work on me over time. This and that. Be honest with him because he knows everything. You can't hide it from him. And when you are honest with him and tell him, then that's when you get help. Amen. So God, God longs for the time that you come and pray. There are times while you're washing dishes. Uh, driving up the road, going to this, dropping the kids out, waiting in the car rider line, whatever. You can find time to spend with the Lord. Amen. So I told you no man or woman of God is any greater than his or her prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, I encourage you today to get one. God wants to talk with you. He wants to give you answers. He wants to show you the way to go. He wants to put hope inside of you because this world is trying to take away all our hope, all our peace, all our joy. But God says that he wants to be the fulfillment of everything in our lives. Amen. Go with me to Ephesians 1 verse. Y'all there? You've been there, hadn't you? Let me get there. Paul wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul had the greatest revelation of grace. And do you know we can believe God to have that same revelation? He's no respected person. Paul, don't make him more than he was. He was a man just like us, a flesh and blood man just like us. The same Holy Spirit that was in Paul is in us. Ephesians 1 verse 15, we're going to look at 16. You there? He said, I cease not to give thanks for you, make a mention of you in my prayers. Now, when we went to Bible college, Pastor John made this statement. He said, as a pastor, you need to thank God for the people that's with you and thank God for the people that ain't with you. Thank God for the people that do what you ask. Thank God for the people that don't do what you ask. He said, because both of them are making you. He said, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. God wants you to have wisdom. God wants you to be wise. He's not hiding himself from you. God wants you to know everything that he knows. Amen. 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. We need to be able to see into the word of God. See what he meant when he had it written. He said, I pray. Have you ever seen, boy, I tell you, when her, I, I pray her eyes come open. That means I pray that she comes out of, out of darkness and be able to see. I want her to see. Have you ever seen people, uh, I don't know, doing something in their life? You said, but I tell you, when her eyes come open, things will change. When you see the truth of a thing. I bet you she'll change when her eyes come open. So he prayed that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they'll know what is the hope of his calling. All of you been called. All of you have a calling. No, every calling is not up here. But everyone has a calling, and that calling is valuable to the kingdom of God because everything that God sets in order is valuable. So all of us have a calling, and when you spend time in prayer with God, God will reveal to you what your calling is. Your calling is usually in line with something you like to do. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us with who believe, According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Now, he said Jesus above all principality, all power, might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Now, where are we? We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So what that means, we are far above all principality, power, might, and dominion of the enemy. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And have put, how many things? All things under his feet. Now, where's the feet? Where's, the, where's your feet? In the body. Your feet's in the body. He had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the, gave him to be the, now, where does the thinking and the reasoning comes from? From the head. That's why we need to seek God about not some things we do, everything we do. We need to seek God about everything we do. We usually do it and then we ask him to approve it. (laughs) He is the head over all things to who? He's the head of the church. The church is who? Yeah, the church is you. The church is me. The church is us. He is the head over all things to the church, not the world. He's the head of all. Satan is the God of the world. Jesus is the head of the church. He's the head of the church. I know we say this this saying, I'm the head and not the tail. Well, we're not the tail, but we're certainly not the head. I know what they mean when they say I'm the head. They mean that, you know, I'm not beneath. But we're not the head. He's the head. See, as long as we think we're the head, then we think we can run our own lives. We think we can make our own decisions and choose what we want to do. As long as we think we're the head. Your body, (laughs) your head woke up this morning. All your body woke up. Your head went to the closet and picked out what you was going to wear and all this and all this. Your head, that thinking come out of your head. 
We got to understand that the wisdom of God comes from the head. It comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And God said he wants us to have all wisdom. He wants the eyes of our understanding to be open. Open to know what's yours. Open to know the power that you have. Open to know what the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ have done for you. He said, I want you to be fully aware today that I love you. You don't have to work to get me to love you. You don't have to work to get me to accept you. You're already accepted in the beloved. He said, I want you to know this. He said, he's put all principalities under our feet, all things under our feet. What kind of things? All things. Sickness, lack, disease, all Weariness, frustration, oh, he's put all things. And he is the head over all things to the church. Now, listen to it. Let's get a little passionate. This is the Passion Translation. Because of this, since I first heard about your strong faith in the Lord, Jesus Christ, and your tender love toward all his devoted ones, my heart is always full and overflowing with thanks to God for you as I constantly remember you in my prayers. That's why every day we should thank God for all of our brothers and our sisters. Those that are in this church, those that don't even belong, if they're in the body, we need to thank God for every church, every ministry, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, every missionary, every church. I don't care where it's China, Korea, the Ukraine, Russia, Korea. It doesn't matter. God's got people everywhere. And we should be thanking God for one another, not talking about one another. Thanking God for one another, lifting one another up, helping one another, loving one another. That's what God is wanting us to do because that's how God feels about us. He said, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. To know him through your deepening, deepening intimacy with him. God wants to be intimate with you. God's, God is into relationship. Have you ever saw somebody maybe that you needed a favor from them or you needed them to do something, but you really don't have that close relationship with them? But say, for instance, I wanted Kevon to do something. Well, Tori is his wife. So I don't feel that I know Kev enough to go to him and just ask him. So I go to Tori. And because Tori and I have a relationship. Now, I'm just using this. I got a relationship with Kev. I'm just using this as an analogy. And I go to Tori because Tori is close to Kev. And now I want Tori to ask Kev for me. See, a lot of y'all want the preacher to ask God for you. God said, no, I want you to know that you can come into my very presence. You can come into the very throne room and you ain't got to go through nobody. Glory to God. You can come to me and you can ask me for yourself. God said, I want you to know I care about everything that you care about, everything that affects you. Do you not know that as your father, it affects me? Because I want you to be full of joy, and I want you to be full of peace. And if something is hurting you, if something is frustrating you, if something is aggravating you, if somebody's doing whatever, I want to get in there and fix that thing for you. And he said, the way you get to know me is by spending time with me. You're never going to know God if you don't spend any time with him. And I'm not talking about just Sunday morning or Wednesday night. Every day. 
Because I tell you, if I'm married to you, I don't want you coming home Monday. I don't see you no more to Thursday. That ain't going to work. You know? <laughs> That's my Spanish teacher, Mrs. Saberio, who used to say, you know? And so God said, I want to hear from you every day. You want to hear from me every day. I want to hear from you every day. And do you know every day he don't, wanna, he don't want you coming with, a, with a, 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 a whole list of what you need him to do? How about sometimes you just come in his presence and just thank him for just being God? Just thank him for never changing, to always being the same, to being no respecter of person. Why don't you just thank him for creating this beautiful universe? And all, with all the stuff going on, it's still beautiful. You say, Dad, I'm not coming to you asking for nothing. Because your word said, if I would seek first the kingdom, all these things would be things I'm sweating over you want to give me. Some of y'all that saw Facebook, this is a good place to put it in here. It's on me, I can't help it. We went to Autumn Tea at my sister's church last night, and they were giving away a 58-inch TV. Well, when I walked in, and they gave us a ticket and everything filled it out, and I told my sister, I said, you don't need to pass out any more tickets, because that's mine. It's going home with me. Well, we go on in and eat and laugh. We're having a great time. And when they had blue tickets they were giving away, then the little boy shook it. He, sh- he shook it again. He shook it again. And she reached and I'm talking. I'm really not, you know. And they said, the winner is Gwen McIntyre. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking I got one of the other smaller gifts. I'm sitting there like, they said, Great little say, girl. I said, well, he said, you won the TV. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they, the, the, mo, they said, she said that. When she walked in, she said that. They were just amazed. She said, don't give out no tickets because that's mine. They said, we want something, we're going, (laughs) no. The favor. But I remember, I think it's been about maybe three or four weeks ago, we were looking at some TVs for somebody, and uh, my son tried to get me to get this big old TV. I said, boy, I got bills. (laughs) <laughs> that is not a necessity. That is not, I got a TV in my bedroom, a TV in the den, a TV in the other bed. I ain't got time to even watch them much, a little bit of Western, but I ain't, we back in school, you know. Uh, I ain't buying no TV, boy. That's exactly what I said. I ain't buying no TV. There ain't no priority. He told me, see, I didn't need to buy it, Elijah, because he had plans to give it to me. God's got plans to meet the needs in your life. If you will just put your expectancy out there. Because everything we're going to get, you ain't going to have to buy it. Everything you get, you ain't going to have to pay for it. Somebody God is going to use just to bless you. He told me about a month ago, he said, expect favor everywhere you go. He said, expect favor everywhere you go. My sister called me last night, Lillian, and she said, Gwen. Oh, God, I got bad news. I said, what's wrong? She said, we, Grayla left your TV, but somebody took it. I said, don't even try. Can't no devil take nothing God done give me. 
She just started to laugh. I said, don't even try. Don't even go there. But God wants to be intimate with us. He wants us to get to a place. Now, when I said it, I was just saying. But I, I just, you know, that's mine. Didn't, I didn't pray about it. But nothing. I just said, that's mine. When I got home last night, the Lord said, everything else can come to you just that easy. I said, well, glory. See, that comes out of an intimacy. That comes out of spending time with him and knowing him. A lot of times we don't want to pray because we have not seen anything happen. But just because you ain't doesn't mean it hadn't happened. You got to praise him till it show up. Because if he told you it's coming... It's coming because he's not a man that he should lie. All you got to do is praise him while you wait. (laughs) Because if he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Verse 18, he said, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. God gave you an imagination. He gave you an imagination. Flooding you with light. Until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy one. We're God's inheritance. That's what we are. We're God's inheritance. He said, I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. That's why you need to study the word. How does faith come? Hearing what? The word of God. Not just any word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He said, then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. This is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. Now, that's where we are. We're seated with him. We're on the right hand of the Father with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government, and realm of power in existence. He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised, not only in this age, but in the age that is to come. And he alone is the leader and source of everything needed in the church. He's the source of everything needed in the church or needed in the body. He's the source of your faith. He's the source of your joy. He's the source of your peace. He's the source. When they were singing, what what were we singing this morning? He won't fail first. And then his great love. He's the source of it. We're, We're trying to, we're looking in wrong places. But he's the source. We go to him. Any good father wants to bless their children. There are times you get your kids what they need, and then there are times you bless your kids with some things they want. Glory to God. Well, fatherhood came out of him. Do you think you came up with that? No. No. I bought Destiny a few dresses the other week. Do you think that's the last time I'm going to buy her a dress? As soon as I get to the store. Glory to God. And you know why? It's not because she does everything perfect or whatever. It's because I love her. I don't even start venturing out getting Mookie some stuff. I just venture out a little bit. Get her some stuff. I told them last week when we took Destiny out for her birthday. See, I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to be like Jesus. 
I told him, I said, I need y'all's Christmas list. It ain't a matter whether you're going to get something. <laughs> I said, it's not a matter. Mama tell them close mouth, don't get fed. I said, I need your Christmas list. I said, because I need to know how to start saving. Jesus already got our Christmas list. Everything you need has already been placed in your spiritual account. Daddy said you ain't got to wait to Christmas to pull it out. If you need it now, by faith, go into your account and request it and it shall be. Because he's the source of it all. He's the source of it. Folk will have you jumping through hoops. I'd rather go to the source. Of unlimited supply. I'd rather go to the one that recession don't even have a chance to work up there. Nothing gets old up there. Nothing rusts. Nothing decays. Nothing wears out. And there ain't no strings attached. God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ. And has given him the highest rank above all others. And now, when, now, we, his church, are his body on the earth, and that which fills him who is being filled by it. What filled him is now filling us. We're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, and you go get in in daddy's presence, get in his face. Start thanking him. I, I, I took a little walk down memory lane. And I said, God, I'm grateful. Because I did some foolish things that could have cut my life off. Could have could have just had some really bad results. But you spared me. You, you, well, I told him this morning, I said, when I didn't even know I needed you. When I didn't even want you, you wanted me. You were still watching over me. and take, Do you know he doesn't take any better care of me now than he did when I didn't want him? Because, see, his love is not predicated by my actions. Now, that's love. And so that's what Paul, do you notice in this, Paul ain't prayed for no donkey or his next change of clothes or food. Paul knew that if he was in the will of God and doing what God said, God would supply. That's what God is saying to you this morning. If you will pray like I prayed and like I gave those prayers to Paul, he said, you're going to be amazed at how you're going to have to stop asking for things because it's going to be my good pleasure to add them to you because you are praying for my perfect will to be done in the earth. See, we're praying about our will. Paul didn't pray about his will. Jesus didn't pray about his. He prayed about the will of the Father being done. And so when you, you're praying that the Father's will be done, you are advancing the kingdom of God. And God said, boy, they all for me. Let me add this. So you ain't even got to ask me for the money for this. You ain't got to ask me for this. Or you ain't got to ask. It's my good pleasure because you're seeking first my kingdom and my way of doing and my way of being right. So I just want to. Add this to you. When we get that understanding, you know, man, it's Ephesians 3. And I'm going to challenge Lifeline. I, pro- I ain't going to get through today, but I'm going to challenge Lifeline. I'm going to give you all these scriptures. And I want us to start praying these scriptures every day. Start, and we're going to see the change. Because when we're praying for God's will, God's going to see to it that things you have need of, he's going to see to it. He's going to add it to you. He's going to take that sweat out. 
Ephesians 3, verse 13, no, it's 14 through 21. Everybody there? It says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The whole family. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now you know he's some kind of rich. To be strengthened with might or power by his spirit in your inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? By faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know, God wants you to know some things today. And to know the love of Christ, which passive knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all, gosh, that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That power is the love of God, it's the Holy Spirit. Unto him be glory where in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Wow. Wow. He said he bowed his knees. He's praying for others. A lot of time, most of our prayers are for ourselves. He's praying for others. He's talking about the whole family of God. He would grant us according to the riches of his glory. Strengthen us in our inner man. When Christ dwell in our hearts by faith, it's going to keep us rooted. And it's going to keep us grounded. We'll be able to understand what all saints. See, God wants the whole body of Christ to understand who he is, what he's done, and what that means to me. And to know the love of Christ. See, when you know God loves you, it removes the fear. It removes, it removes, love will cast that fear out. Love will turn on the words. The love of God, when you know, then you're no longer afraid God going to get me. Uh, then God ain't going to get you. I already got you. He got you through Jesus. Amen. He don't have no big book up there. He done uh, seen how many things you did wrong this week so he can get you. No, that's not God. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly, exceedingly abundantly above all. Above all, that we can ask a thing. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I can ask for some stuff. I can think some stuff. And he said he can do abundantly above all that I can even ask or according to the power of God. <coughs> That's working in us. The power of God's working in us. He's working both to will and to do his good pleasure in us. I'm going to close with this one. I'm going to read it to you now out the passion. So I kneel humbly in awe. When the last time you've been in awe about God? She said it this morning. I've seen it with my own eyes. Woo! I've experienced this, Sister Teresa. I've seen it. God move with my own eyes. Not only for me, but for others. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on the earth. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being 
with his divine might and explosive power. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then, then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. Ooh, glory. He will outdo them all. For his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church in every generation through Jesus Christ. And all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen and amen. Who do you hear how he described his love? Endless love beyond measurement. Transcends our understanding. I know why we make that statement out. That blew my mind. It was so good. That thing blew my mind. This extravagant love. Ooh, it pours into you until you are filled to overflow. Never doubt God's mighty power. Don't doubt today. God's going to come through. He's going to be exactly like he said. Oh, it may be taking a little longer than you want it, but God is perfecting something in you. If what you prayed for didn't happen last night, just know God is perfecting something in you that when he gives you that thing that is beyond your wildest imagination, it won't take you away from him. So sometimes God's got to between that prayer and there it is, he's got to perfect something in you. Because there's a lot of people told God, if you'll just do this, God, I promise I'll live for you. And you don't see them. They're on the ocean, on the river, in that big boat, or they're somewhere else instead of in the house of God. God said, I don't want that to come between us. I don't want anything I give you to come between us. Never doubt God's mighty power. Ooh, he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. These are prayers that Paul prayed, y'all. Do you see where he said he had to have something paid by 5 o'clock? You don't know where... This going to come from, or he don't know where that's going to come. You don't see that. What's he seeking? The kingdom. What's he praying? The will of God be done in the earth, even as it's done in heaven. And God said, as long as you're doing that, I'm going to see to it. That everything else you have need of, I'm going to add it to you. I'm a, See, when I took the sweat out. See, when Adam fell, I told him, you're going to work by the sweat of your faith. He said, when I died, I took the sweat out. Now, instead of doing this, you're believing. God said, I want to do above your wildest man. What can you imagine today? What's your request today? He said, don't doubt. 
Just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, things, things. Money is a thing. Health is a thing. A house is a thing. A car is a thing. Clothes is a thing. Food is a thing. Then he said he will add all these other things. So let's take God at his word. Amen. Those were Paul's prayers. To be much for God, we must be much with God. Well, did you receive? Amen.